Lewis Hamilton is the 2020 world champion. You can be the greatest, you can be the best. A star is you born. Can be King Kong banging on your chest. He has shown them you all. Can be the world. <laughs> you can beat the world. That's breathtaking. You can talk to God, go banging on his door. Come Throw your hands up, you can be the class. You can move a mountain, you can break ground. You can be a master, don't wait for love. Dedicate yourself and you'll find yourself. He's one of the greatest of all time, a true champion. Standing in the hall of fame. When this whole movement started, it really brought up a lot of emotions from the past that I had really suppressed, and I think a lot of people do suppress things, you know, but that has an impact. You know, they leave scars. Hello. Hello. My name's Catherine, and I work at UBS. Nice to meet you, Catherine. I'm from an employee network from Mosaic mm -hmm. that supports and promotes the professional growth and development of ethnic minorities okay. at UBS. So that's something that I've been working very hard along with lots of other people in the background to really kind of push that through. Amazing. Especially when it comes to supporting ethnic minorities within leadership roles at UBS. Good, I love that. So it's not an easy task. We're seeing that all over the world, I think, in general. But you've got to start somewhere for change, so it's, it's good. There's always been this issue Mm -hmm. But Black Lives Matter's movement really acted as a catalyst to really open a lot of people's eyes. Absolutely. Thankfully for the Black Lives Matter movement, I think it's now started to put pressure on businesses and organisations to that start to actually do something, get out of their comfort zone and start to look at what they can do internally. And it's about accountability, isn't it? And it's also about kind of transparency and raising awareness. Racism, systemic racism, is not just a US problem, which I continue to kind of hear left, right and centre, and it's actually a pain point for me. Me too. Systemic racism or racism in its kind of entirety mm -hmm. is a global issue. You're literally taking words out of my mouth because this is exactly what I've been saying, uh, you know, for so long. Because it's actually not really, it shouldn't have to be for minorities to have to go to work to try and get change. But there is a lot of support, there is a lot of people that, you know, like UBS allowing you to do what you're doing. I think that's amazing. It should be a collective effort and movement, Definitely. which I think was quite inspiring for me at least when I saw the Black Lives Matter movement and the numbers in terms of the majority that were out there and fighting and were using their voice because when you're silent, you're complicit. Yes, so. absolutely. And there's a lot of people that are silent. But in the past, you were forced to have to stay silent. And even if you expressed just a tiny bit of it, people wouldn't understand and wouldn't accept it or wouldn't do anything about it. And I've had to call some organizations and people out publicly, which generally gets the wrong reaction. I don't want people to then put their guards up or be defensive. So then I've had to then, I've learned through the process of trying to engage in a different way and trying to empower and say, look, let's, it's a collective, it's a work, we work together on this. And it's encouraging people who see it happening and not to just to stay quiet and just allow it to happen. Exactly, like, exactly. Like, if you see someone in your workspace or, or walking down the street receiving somebody, you know, abuse, don't just walk by and say, it's none of my business, I'm not gonna do anything. Like, say something about it, you know. You can go the distance, you can run the mile, you can walk straight through hell with a smile. I want to help Formula One, I want to help Mercedes in that journey to really change, not 10 years from now, 20 years from now, now. With the whole Black Lives Matter movement, it really did kind of awaken a lot of suppressed emotions that I had very much buried, you know, and I, didn't, I wasn't even aware of them, mm. that, they were, yeah, same. that they were there. Yeah. And then it was like, I was just overcome with so much emotion and so much anger, fight, um, frustration. And when I took a step back myself, I can see how deeply ingrained and embedded this is in society, right from, you know, ethnic minorities, where they're placed in terms of housing, the schools, underfunded schools, yeah, yeah. and it all plays a part. The whole system, yeah. The whole system is flawed. The whole system is flawed. It is. I feel like I'm seeing a mirror image of myself because this is exactly how I felt. And it takes a lot of courage, I think, for people uh, like us to, to, to speak out, to show yeah. how you felt. And I felt the same thing, you know, things came up 
that I really had no idea that I'd suppressed. Yeah, same. And the mix of emotions, the anger, just the sadness that came up that I'd felt from before. And I remember now every single one of those things that I experienced like it was yesterday. And I'd, I'd really forgotten a lot of them, you know, because I just channeled it into being the best I can be and overcoming whatever it is in front of me. I can't feels really powerful when I'm in it, but imagine being in the Formula One car. In the past years, I've had racist names being called to me. If anybody had said anything to me, I would just ignore them and get them back on the track. I just want to go back to when you were little and you were at the racetracks and before you started racing. Being in a predominantly white sport, were you aware that you were the only biracial child there? Yeah, from day one. I mean, I started experiencing it when I was five at school. And when I started racing when I was eight, um, from day one, I knew. At the core of me, I always remember people telling me I couldn't do something. So part of my personality is continuing to prove those individuals wrong. I remember I hear those words from my teachers, you'll never amount to nothing. I remember hearing other racing dads saying, you're never going to make it. And other kids and so that's you know that's ingrained in my in the fire in my chest in my heart i'm very very lucky at my you know i had this powerful incredibly strong willed black man that was right by my side the whole way and he was the one i looked up to we arrived in our car with a rust bucket trailer and this rusty old go-kart and <laughs> i remember us putting it on the floor and everyone looking at us and you know, little did they know we were going to turn heads, you know, and little did they know that I would be the most successful driver of all time, you know, and that for me is like the best thing ever. <laughs> I love that. But at the same time, you also didn't know at that time, do you know what I mean? So it for does sure, take no. a lot of perseverance and it takes a lot of fight. No, for sure. It's, it's, it's something I think we probably all as human beings take for granted. People that tune in and watch me, for example, they have no idea I've been racing for 26 years. Yeah. Whoever you've seen on TV, whoever you're admiring, you know, seeing the tip of the success, you have no idea of what's, you know, that's why people today have so much more respect all of a sudden for Michael Jordan, who I've always loved. Because now they're seeing, oh my God, all this work he did in the background. And, and um, you know, storytelling is so, so important. And we need to get more of it out there. Because there's so many incredible stories out there of people doing just seeing just remarkable things. And my parents worked so hard to give me the opportunity, so I owe it to them always, no matter how long I go, to, to follow through with this and take it to where it is full potential, you know? Mm -hmm. I just set my goals and my targets very, very high that they're almost unreachable. Like seven titles was generally unreachable, you know? No one ever thought that that was ever gonna happen. And here I am. Do it for your country, do it for your name. How is gonna is be making dead. history. You're standing in the hall of fame. It's going to take all of us to come together to understand and acknowledge it and to implement change. You are really breaking barriers in Formula One, especially with the fight for racial equality and all of the records that you are breaking. But I would just like to touch on kind of, you know, you changed the cars from silver to, to black. Yeah. That was a huge statement. It really was, and when we started at the beginning of the year, sitting and talking with the team and having a difficult conversation, and it took a lot of dialogue because, you know, initially it's like, well, there isn't a problem. I don't see a problem, and most often it's people, well, we, don't, we didn't realise. I mean, it's not intentional. It's just how it's been. If you look at Mercedes-Benz history, they have been open saying, you know, our past is not great, but this is where we're going. And so it was just discussing that and saying, you want to be a part of this shift also. Yeah. In the car industry as a whole, it's the only brand, as far as I'm aware, that has made such a big, powerful statement. And I'm really, really proud of them. And it makes me want to continue with them and continue to show the world that this is the greatest car manufacturer brand family uh, that there is. It was such a powerful statement on so many levels and it moved to so, so many people. And I know at UBS especially. Thank you. It looks so good, the car. I don't know how we're going to go back to silver because it's exactly. so good. <laughs> Are you set to go back? Do you plan to go back? It's a beautiful car. Well, Mercedes is the silver arrows, so I don't know which point they're going to... I'm, I'm sure normally they're going to go back, but 
I'll never forget this year, and, and I think everyone in the team has loved the car the way it is. Be believers, be leaders, be astronauts, be champions, be truth seekers. Lewis Hamilton, he is seven times a world champion! I'd like to say a big thanks to everyone in this team. What you've done the past couple of years is just remarkable. God bless you. How are you going to continue with this journey and perseverance in the fight for racial equality? When I stop, there's not another me coming at the moment. So I realise that that's a much longer and harder thing to change, but what can be changed is the work. There's so many jobs within our, you know, engineers, mechanics, people in the PR. There's literally hundreds of different jobs and levels. And I've also gone through the diversity and inclusion training with, with my team. This year particularly, I've been reading a lot more, just trying to educate myself more on where we started, where we've been, why things the way they are, you know? So it's not just for us, just one type of people to have to go and do the work, the homework. It's for all of us. All you gotta do is look at all the other people out there that are also doing great, great things and find someone to, find someone that inspires you. And, you know, I, I look at people, people past and present, like Nelson Mandela, and I'm like, wow. So inspiring, um, yeah. Ali was my favorite sportsman, so I have those individuals to like remind me that you know, whatever you're going through is, there's people who had it way, way worse. Look at Mandela, 26 years in prison, you know, and he came out and he was the greatest human ever. So I think just stay positive, know that you're making a difference and, and don't, don't stop until the job is done. We do want a diverse set of leaders here at UBS, but it is... It's not given. It is not given, but we do need support from people from the top. Yeah, definitely. I know you've done a lot within your space and you've used your platform to talk about racial equality. What does the journey look like next? Well, thank you. I think, yeah, I mean, that's, that's the big, big question. I think right now there's a lot of talk and a lot of, sim, you know, symbolic gestures, but the discussions that I'm trying to have in the background is like, what real action are we gonna put in place? Like if you look at Formula One, for example, we do take the knee at the beginning. We have that five seconds that they give us to take the knee. So it's just continuously, as painful as it can be, continuously raising awareness for it, continuously talking about it. And it's engaging also with partners, you know, and seeing how you can get collaborative with people. So I'm really, really proud of what UBS is doing and, and I've, so grateful for this uh, this interview with you. It's been been I've seen. I, honestly, I wasn't expecting it when I came in here to see firstly yourself, a person of color, someone biracial yeah. also, and then to see that there's so many similarities and that we're both also fighting for or pushing and working towards common goals. So it's really awesome to see that UBS are taking that seriously, and um, that makes me want to continue with them for for much longer. And it's really awesome to see what you're doing as well, Lewis, and I really do mean that, and how much you really are pushing the boundaries in F1. So thank you, thank you so much, and thank you so very much for your time. My pleasure. Thank you. And the world's gonna know your name. That's for all the kids out there who dream the impossible. We are the walls of the Hall of Fame.